Hello, and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to a Beyond the Summit presentation of the Star Ladder European I-League 13. All that good stuff jumbled in together, mixed up, spit back out. We've got four CNL versus none other than the Hellraisers here in Game 3 of the Best of 3 series. And we had a bit of a server issue, so we are now completing the remake process and going into an all-pick re of the same draft. So, going into the draft screen here, you can see... Vaguely what we're looking at, everybody picking the same thing as before, and it should get uh, down and dirty pretty quick here. Uh, I was already talking in the draft about a couple different aspects of the lineups here. I think HR in general have more potential to uh, succeed with this just based on the ease of execution that the heroes bring. Uh, the AoE stun factor is pretty huge here. The Slardar, the Lion, they're really good at responding to the Spear Breaker to catch in the Queen of Pain off guard and they're just really good in those earlier fights so I'm looking forward to see what uh, they bring to bear against 4CNL who so far have been doing really well this game obviously they had a rough game too uh, where EGM didn't get off the ground on the Bounty Hunter but overall I think 4CNL have been making some really good plays this game and this match for that matter cool set for the Disruptor here big spiny lizard here it's very scaly and uh, some ninja stuff going on with him too. So showing off some cool cosmetics. Um, but more importantly, showing off uh, their lanes here. We're going to be seeing Bamboo go for that uh, off lane play, but it's not going to be the ward you would expect. We're not going to actually be seeing a ward down here or down here. We're actually going to be seeing a ward here, which I do believe blocks that pull. I'm usually, I'm, uh, I'll admit one of my weak points is the southern part of that spawn, but I think that's correct. So I think that will block it off, and Bambo then can just go from some cog play from there. It's going to force the line to most likely go for the top lane if they can't get that pull unlocked, and then they're going to have to dual lane with the Slardar and the Lion. Got him. Uh, tries to arctic burn. Bambo doesn't get a single hit in, and in fact, knocked back by the cogs. Probably very frustrated at that. Losing half your mana at the beginning of the game with accomplishing nothing the is not begins. the funnest thing in the world. Piecat going to grab the bounty rune up top. <laughs> Affinjay's Shadow Fiend going to grab the bounty rune down bottom. And, uh, yeah, I think it's just going to be a, kind of a basic start for the mid lane matchup here. Uh, we've seen Queen of Pain versus Shadow Fiend plenty, And the Queen of Pain does have the potential to pressure the SF, but it really comes down to which support gives more space to their mid laner in order for FNNJ to get those souls up. He gets his healing self, but they don't have the Arctic Burn just yet, and EGM's going to get the first uh, damage exchange, I would say. Piecat probably getting a skill with the Shadow Strike here, and then EGM will go for some more hits. In the meantime, though, got him. Going to be looking for that double Arctic Burn. It looks like he's going to get it here. Oh, no, uphill miss. This is the worst thing about Wyvern is that uphill miss. It happens to me all the time. And we do see two uphill misses before, finally, the Arctic Burn connects. You're on to the Queen of Pain. That really needs to be, like, true strike. I, I, I don't care. It's just so, like, game losing if you, if you don't get the hit in that you need. But I guess Wyvern is strong enough as it is. Uh, Shadow Fiend. Gonna be okay at his start. I mean, he's three and one already. Pycat's three and zero. Oh. Gonna be able to scream down some creeps. I don't know. Well, he doesn't have that skill, but I think it's overall gonna be favoring the Queen of Pain as we progress, especially if EGM sticks around. But EGM is actually in a bit of a pickle here. He's gonna be pincered in by the Slardar, who can just walk up and crush him, no problem at all. Level one disruptor, not in a great position here. Slowed down, body blocked. But not giving the first blood to FNJ. Slarchlo takes it for himself, despite it being a pretty clear kill. And I think that it should have been the Shadowfiend's kill. Either way, they're happy about how that went down. But if they give uh, Necromastery 15 to the Shadowfiend, then he's going to be even better, and the, the Wyvern can start stacking and pulling. Speaking of, he'll stack up the hard camp here for the western side. But uh, this camp isn't going to be spawning. As mentioned, so yeah, Jitsu is mostly dedicated to the creep wave, and oh no, he went for oh this this happens actually a lot. We'll talk about it in a second, but Avenage actually getting the Invisor in here. There shouldn't be any detection. Oh, there is a Sentry, and they will be able to bring down Avenage with one more hit. Shotslo not really getting much out of that crush, and the single file body block here. Shotslo can't get away. He's gonna be nuked down over time. Nice little crush, but EGM's got his number and gets some vengeance for that first blood. Double kill for EGM. As far as uh, the creep equilibrium thing, we see the creep wave like had two range creeps, five or six melee all over here. That's a mistake some support players make, where essentially they 
they don't check if this camp spawns, and they just go for naturally their 113 pull. We're actually going to see charge mid, Affid and Jay actually in some, oh, some real trouble here. Uh, the Winter Wyvern really can only do so much in this situation. Wants to skill the Cold Embrace at the last second, and he will. it will be enough to keep the SF alive. Good thing he held the skill point too. Some people just naturally go for the Splinter Blast. Um, but yeah, a lot of times you'll see a support um, just pull through at 111, 113, and not scout out this spawn, and then tango through and be like, oh, well, there's not a camp there that I can uh, double pull up. And he does get, oh, yeah, cutting another tree down, he is actually able to get the, the pull to the central camp. But yeah, if you don't scout that out, there's no way you make a connection like that, and then you end up pushing up the creep wave, which gives uh, Six of Bamboo a ton of experience. He's already level 4 on the Clockwork Offlane. Nico, on the other hand, that uh, support Spirit Breaker going to be making his way back up top. Anyways, uh, early CS going to be going to the Gyrocopter up top 24 at 20. The Juggernaut taking up 20 and 5 himself. Um, really not a big deal how... how uh, they're getting perfect starts pretty much, so it's like it doesn't matter if one gets a slight advantage over the other. It's really what they do with that farm shortly thereafter that becomes the most important. EGM does not have glimpse here. Kinetic Field not going to be in range, so... He's just going to let Shashlo walk away here. And uh, that's just some rune coverage there. Essentially the double damage rune going to Slaughter and Bambo covering up the bounty rune. You see how far Bambo is now. Like he's tanky enough to withstand the spin damage from the Juggernaut, even with the phase boots auto attacks that come after. So he's pretty happy just uh, to go forward to, to get a little bit more ballsy. But we will see the Lion coming in with a good flank. The Dire Observer Ward does not see this smoke. And this might be the fourth kill of the game here. Yajitsu going in with the Hex, going to follow it up with the Earth Spike and spin to win. It is going to be the death of Sexy Bambo here, and Juggernaut will take that one happily. So good smoke play there, um, recognizing there's probably, there is a ward uh, somewhere within uh, this box here. So uh, yeah, taking care of business, making that smoke play happen and finding themselves a kill. So doesn't make up for the fact that still Bambo is like practically level 5, but it's not too bad. Shasha, a, a key crush here in the mid lane. If he gets hit by that charge, one or two bashes, Creative Pain could definitely die for, die for the kill. Bambo though, just going for another uh, ward play here. I'm gonna get some intel. And... Top tower. Yeah, Jitsu doesn't want to be buying, buying the sentries anymore. He wants to be focusing on his blink dagger. So, fact is, uh, whether or not that ward gets dewarded, it's, it's some that Hellraider don't want to be in terms of position. We have one sentry still up on Gotham. He places one here towards the mid lane. Didn't get the high ground ward here, though. And he's going to place one obs here next to uh, the Queen of Pain stacks. Or Gyrocopter stacks, more likely. So Quickvo doing a really good job here. 44 and 24, just getting the perfect start. And it looks like he's going to be going for that early Sanj buildup. Oh, nope. Sells the ring of... Or the belt of giant strength, and uh, he's gonna just keep doing his thing. Uh, good rune coverage once again here, but ha uh, Queen of Pain actually picks it up this time. Haste for her, and of course the bottle refill, which is ever so important. So, oh, a little bit of lag there. Hope you guys didn't get too much of that, no. but uh, yeah. So we have Shotsville here, only level 3 compared to the Clockwork, who is almost level 6. And that really comes down to better pulling from EGM than what we saw from Yajitsu. That pull block, I mean, it's still it's almost seven minutes in the game, the pull still hasn't spawned, and Yajitsu is just trying to stack up this uh, easy camp here, which can't, it can only do so much. Hill Trolls and Ghosts can still clear out a creep wave pretty effectively, because the attack speed slow as well as the heal over time from the Hill Troll Priest, but you're not getting that much experience on the Lion, because he's not seeing those creeps die. Mid here, Bambo just gonna walk right into the Winter Wyvern, but could find himself in a bit of a pickle here if Slardar is able to just push forward. Bambo, Tranquil Boots just walks away. Interesting rotation. Maybe if he can just kind of wa walk it in, get an easy cogs on the Shadow Fiend, a few battery salt ticks, and give Queen of Pain a, a quick kill. But it's probably less than 50% play, and he's just fishing for an opportunity while the creep wave is away from his tower. We're actually gonna see a charge here. Going on to Shasho again. The crush is going to come into play. Doesn't 
get cancelled the same way the charge does, but either way, it's just a mana exchange as a tier 1 still takes a lot of damage up top. And in fact, looks to go down, the glyph it, but that siege creep's still in play, and it looks like that is going to be the death of the tier 1. Hopefully, back Wakefield's hands, that's their plan, and they do get it. So, although Shotchlow is going to be fine here, they do get the tier 1 tower, giving Koikova, a net worth start of 41.30 here at 8 minutes. Absolutely insane. Really, really good farm from him, and he's going to be able to build up his core item set really quickly. Dominator is the choice for him. Lion actually approaching level 6 quite rapidly now, but just looking at overall levels. We've got a high level Juggernaut, high level Shadow Fiend, and then a very, very low level. Spirit Breaker and Slardar. So the, those guys that usually are on the front line that are just these bashy bruisers that will be able to get right up in your face are actually going to be the, the weaker ones in terms of levels. So the limitation of that, of course, oh, do they see? They should see. I think they see, they're trying to play it casual, but they're going to go for a kill on Pycat here. They're going to open with the Hex, got him, getting some good damage in, they'll get the air spike, and that will be a kill for the Shadow Fiend. A very smooth movement there. Got him, just looking the other way, whistling to himself. No, oh, I don't see you. There's no chance that we could have a Sentry Ward already waiting for you, and in fact, they do. So, nice little pick up there, 3-2 to two in favor of Hellraiser's your current kill score, and uh, a level chart obviously speaks for itself. Some good levels uh, for the cores of the Radiant, but overall better for the Dire. Looking for the tempo control from the Clockwork here. Bambos chilling out of the mid, trying to gradually farm up that Blade Mail, but... I think they need to do more than just farm. They need to start finding kills and start generating momentum for their team. Or you're going to see Hellraiser slip a Roshan in and suddenly start taking objectives. So the question is, does this Seder stack or does this Seder scout Rosh? Those are both very important aspects. And uh, I would say maybe get a triple stack in your Ancients and then focus on Roshan. Otherwise, Bambo is going to be spamming a lot of Rocket Flares into the pit. We've currently got a smoke play coming in. Afeninje up here. Shachla really wants to get in on, in on EGM, but that's a hard uh, vector until he pushes forward anyways. Yeah, walks right into it. A quick crush raise kill. And that just provides really no opportunity. And we'll actually see a smoke from the gyrocopter. Looking for a, a 3v1 here on the juggernaut. They should probably save the hookshot for the spin TP. They don't have the Nether Strike, and they probably can't rely on the Bash. So, but they use the Hook Shot. There's the Spin TP, and Jarcopter's rotation is completely wasted. So, if they just don't engage uh, the way they needed to to find that kill. They'll just force the Juggernaut back to base, while the top lane gets absolutely murdered. The Glyph popped. This will be a, a tier one lost top. And if you look at the Ward position now, they are really going to start suppressing for CNL's form. No level 6 on either the Spirit Breaker or the Disruptor just yet. It's much harder for Forcinel to fight at this point. Even though net worth and experience is even overall between the two teams, I just feel like Hellraiser are in a much better position this game. The Wyvern is probably the most underleveled next to the Slardar, but it's not that big of a deal. The Wyvern should be finding her curse pretty soon. Juggernaut looking for the Battle Fury most likely with that Ring of Health, but... Uh, Looks like Forcing L want to try to try their hand at the enemy jungle, and this could be very dangerous indeed. Shotsho charging forward, Tranquil Boots, and Sprint. Nearly finding an opportunity there. In the end, they'll just route them, and EGM will farm his level 6. No, t no TP available. Mechanism up for Afa Ninja, his current last hit count 91 and 12, so performing really well against the 50 and 5 Queen of Pain there, Pycat. Either l less familiar with the mid lane since he's been doing so much safe laning recently, or uh, maybe just pressured harder by the Winter Wyvern than uh, what the Disruptor could put out. In either case, Queen of Pain losing out pretty heavily there, and Shadow Fiend getting some good stack farm too. So with this mechanism, they clearly want to put some pressure here on the bottom lane. They don't have the tools of engagement due to the fact that Shotchlo does not have his Blink Dagger, but still they can kind of just walk up to the Tier 1 tower and put some good hits in. If they take out the Tier 1, it's, it's much more likely they go for an earlier rush play. Borkova going to be farming up some stacks here. It is going to be a, a quad stack, so 
a lot of potential value here, and, and luckily Radiance only one Black Dragon spawned, so they go down pretty quickly with the Max Flat Cannon. In the meantime, it is going to be FNNJ right up here. It looks like they will take this tower. It's going to be very hard to contest this position, even without the Winter Curse to worry about. For right now, Juggernaut on the front line. Healing Ward a bit early, but they keep the Creep Wave alive for quite some time. And it looks like it's just going to be the free tower while Gyrocopter finishes his stacks, or, or tries to. Well, it looks like they're moving for it. This could be very dangerous. I mean, you can cover for the deny, but actually going for it? Oh my. Juggernaut sees like three heroes coming out of the fog the second he moves forward, so he will, uh, in the end, fall back. But I really feel like 4CNL would have been in trouble in that kind of a fight, even with the cooldown and the other ulties ready to go. So, the last hit comes through for the Juggernaut. And from there, looks like they'll just reset and go to mid. Dyer's middle tower uh, is under good attack. few ancients still sticking around here. The bigger, heftier ones that the Gyrocopter will save for later. What are going to be going for that BKB outright, it looks like. Um, pretty necessary this game, honestly. They're, they're under a lot of pressure here. Every, everybody is doing some sort of magical damage. And, well, not Slidar, but Slidar is not involved in this kill here. It's going to be the Winter Wyvern picked up here just by a quick little charge play with the Observer Ward kind of chilling out, scouting out the Ancient Stack. So, we're going to be looking at between the Spear Breaker and the Disruptor, seeing what items they're going to be farming here, who takes the 4 position, who takes the 5. Both of them have some value in getting farm. Spearbreaker going for treads now, could go for like Shadow Blade or BKB later. Um, the Disruptor obviously items like Blink Dagger, Hagen and Scepter are very, very important. So we'll see as that progresses. For now though, the, the Hellraiser supports are pretty clear cut. Five position Wyvern got him, buying every support item, and yeah, Jitsu trying to get that Blink Dagger out as quickly as possible. Juggernaut's Battle Fury progress. Accelerating quickly. He's farming up just single ancients Radiant's at a time, but he is going to be attack. finding three of the four components and only be about 500 gold off of the next one. So I really feel like Hellraiser's timing really just comes down to the Slaughter Blink. Once they have that, they have so many ways to make those fights happen. Bamboo Blade Mill going to be coming out pretty soon, too, though. And obviously the Shadow Fiend won't have a BKB for quite some time. Oh, Afro Ninja finding out Niqua here with his Invis Rune. EGM might be an easier pick as he's not getting uh, away too quickly. He's just going to be... Oh, missing one raise means missing the kill. That definitely would have been the death of EGM there if the raise had been on point. So you see Quickva... He kind of is ready to fight. We're actually going to see a charge and the glimpse back and the cooldown will come through. Gotham's going to be taking a lot of damage, but that mechanism keeping Gotham alive for a very long time, even getting fingered and still alive. Will be caught out by the Bambo hookshot, though, and that is going to be the kill in the end. Had to commit like three different ultimates just to bring that Wyvern down, but in the end they do get the kill score evened out. Great Pain, Agadim Scepter, not going to be up too soon, but he'll get it at a decent timing here, probably 20 or so minutes. BKB, on the other hand, very soon for Koikova, and if he uses this uh, effectively, then Koikova could just win the fights outright for a uh, 4CNL. I mean, they'll try, of course, try to target him down with the Winner's Dyer's Curse, but end of the day, attack. he's still just going to have so much value in terms of just being able to get in there, get his spells off, and of course try to unload that full flak. Because even if you're caught by the Winter's Curse, as a secondary effect, you can still flak your enemies, Dyer's but if you're the single target, then obviously you're you're fully restricted. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. So. Trying to guess the Roshan timing. Is that a smoke actually to disrupt Roshan? It looks like it is, yeah. They thought with the Rocket Flare going away, that they would move into the pit, so they go ahead and smoke and get ready for it with the Static Storm almost off cooldown. In the end, though, it's just Hellraiser spreading the map and waiting for that Slaughter Blink, as I was saying. Shotslo needs that Blink for them to feel confident in the full 5-on-5 five -five engagements, and Wyvern's Winter's Curse would certainly help. I thought Gotham would get his a lot sooner. At 11 minutes, he was uh, hit just hitting level 5, and he hasn't really gotten anything since then. In fact, he's going to get hit by the charge, 
caught inside the kinetic static, and it's a quick kill onto him, it looks like, anyways. Maybe it's not. Slardar gonna be coming in. There's gonna be a Sonic Wave to kill off the Wyvern, but Shotsla will punish Bambo. Very aggressive here. After Ninja only gets one raise off before being glimpsed back, and now the target is actually gonna be the Juggernaut, who's low on mana here. Gonna try to spin, but the right clicks bring him down. Double kill for Pycat, and they can chase onto Shotsla too, sprint or not. He's going to be in some real trouble when Pycat closes in. Nice mechanism, baiting him in. Double raise, but not the last hit to bring down Pycat. And Chachlo, this is very ambitious going in, but he actually goes for the trees here. So, Queen of Pain, Pycat will blink out. Nikwa in a little bit of trouble, but looks like he'll be able to charge away. So, all in all, uh, not getting bashed by Roshan. And is able to, to slip through, getting a, a favorable exchange here, killing off the Juggernaut and the Wyvern. And these cooldowns are pretty short here. The Static Storm is only a 90 second cooldown. Of course, Call Down is one of the shorter ones now at 50 seconds. They can keep spamming, especially when the Axe comes out for the Queen of Pain. They can just keep fighting. They have no cooldown longer than a minute. Oh, well, other than the Sex Storm. Uh, smoke Play going to be coming out here from Hellraisers warding just to make sure that it's going to be effective, but they really need to find a kill with this one. They are unveiling the Slaughter Blink. They're trying to regain momentum in this game, where it's kind of been stifled by 4CNL, as you see by the net worth and experience graphs. And yeah, they just need to make it work. Rocket Flare in the pit, but as soon as that goes away, you're going to see them break it and go for Roshan. So that is going to be the break here. Amp damage coming out in just a few seconds, and they should clear this out quickly, but Bambo already flaring it again. He's being very diligent about that. And it will be actually an opportunity to charge forward. Now they get the glimpse, that charge vision, but uh, the spin, like I talked about in the draft, will negate that glimpse factor. Now down bottom, though, Gotham looks to be just completely isolated. The hookshot went against him, and now uh, everything else in the book will be thrown that way. Shotsla actually getting knocked back by that cog when he blinks in, and Quickbo just pops the BKB, and they'll run him down. Very nice movement there from 4 CNL. The Omni Slash will do some decent damage with that Battle Fury, but. It's only going to net the death of the Gyrocopter with that finger, and then shortly after, they will pick up the Spirit Breaker. Queen of Pain drops a big Sonic Wave, kills off the Shadow Fiend, but now they want more. They want this Juggernaut, and Bambo's not that tanky in order to, to deal with it. Actually, might get himself in some trouble here. He'll pop the Blade Mail, but he gets caught in, and he just suicides against the uh, Juggernaut. Now it's going to be the Juggernaut killed off by EGM, Thunderstrike, and Riot Clicks, but got him. Pops his first ultimate of the game, suddenly jumping up to level 8. Sitting at 5.5 for like 10 minutes, and then suddenly level 8. Actually going to be actually a pretty good trade for Hellraisers, I would say. Despite uh, the really good plays against the Slaughter there. Like, Slaughter got killed for nothing but a BKB charge. But 4CNL kept diving, and, and they lost too much. There's going to be a nice blink crush from Shoslo onto two. Pycat gets the blink away, but Niqua trying to sprint, trying to get that haste out. Oh, yeah, Jitsu with the blink. That's a new one, and that is going to be killing off Pycat with the TP cancel. Yeah, Jitsu finding that blink tiger at a critical timing here, where they're really trying to just kill and garner momentum. And they're, they're getting it now. Honestly, those last couple of picks on the Gyrocopter and the Queen of Pain are huge kills for their team. Mid-tier 1 going to be dropping low. Koikova really wants it. The Siege Creep is not going to be Radiant securing it as Shadowfiend gives denied. it the quick slap deny. So now you have a Gyrocopter that's committed to a BKB rush after Dominator. And he really just isn't in farm mode. The Shadowfiend can farm while the Gyrocopter is kind of forced to fight as a result of his build. And you feel, I feel like Quickova's late game is going to get weaker and weaker as the game progresses as a result. Going to be Blink Crush killing off EGM way too far forward there. And a nice little pick from him. Yeah, I just feel like all of Hellraisers have just come online in a big way. And 4CNL are still having some liabilities. Um, their cooldowns are really short, but that means that their abilities are also generally lower impact. So even if they go in for the Roche here, there's a chance that 4CNL can't contest it. We could still most likely see that Bambo snatch, though. Um, uh, Sexy Bambo, very well known for snatching Aegis on Clockwork. That's one of the things he did a lot, uh, even when he played on Team Zephyr. That was like the thing that he did any game that he could. And uh, you just come to expect it at this point. BKB coming out on the Shadow Fiend. 
Genjutsu Invis. I don't know if they want to follow up on this, though. Like, you get one stun, get the slaughter in there. Great, you do some good damage to Pycat. But he's got the Ags to tank up a bit. And it just wouldn't be the right engage. So instead, it's going to be a smoke play here on Afa Ninja. Gets the BKB off in time, though, and a great two-man crush on the back line. Yet Jitsu doesn't double Earth Spike it, though. He gets the Hex, and that will bring Disruptor low, but it won't kill Disruptor. And we're going to have to see the Winner's Curse just hold off Poikova as he pops his BKB. Got him. Going to be going down to the Rocket Flare. And now Sexy Bamboo in some trouble here. Going to be just destroyed 1v3. And here's going to be EGM with a great combo here. Kinetic and Static. Poikova cleaning up. Pycat blinking in. And... Delivering the killing blows. Afa Ninja might get one more kill before he goes down. The raise off the mark. He too shall fall. For CNL really executing well at the tail end of that team fight. That was exactly what they needed to do. And HR just, they, they seem spread so thin. I really feel it comes down to the fact that the Lion didn't double Earth Spike. He didn't get his Finger of Death off. He didn't double Earth Spike on the Slaughter Crush. All he did was Hex for two and a half seconds on the Disruptor. And the Disruptor still lived. So they didn't get a kill. They didn't get a secondary disable in the Gyrocopter. And then 4CNL just re-engaged with all of their bearings. The Queen of Pain comes in at the perfect time. And that's set up by EGM, who lived through it all. And he really shouldn't have. The Disruptor should have died there. Now he's approaching 4 staff rapidly. And 4CNL, bring it back. Better teamfight execution is uh, going to be allowing them to stay in this game full force. But... Still, the Roshan is becoming a major question for both sides. Who is actually going to get that opportunity to take full advantage of it? There is a Radiant Observer scouting out this uh, farming game, but it's it's a it's a three protect one at least, not four. And Quikvo should be perfectly fine to get all these ancients for himself. And it seems like they want to do something with it, though. They have the Winter's Curse in ten seconds, so the smoke is a little bit early in my mind. But maybe they're predicting some uh, movement here to the south. Yeah, they, they really did think that there was going to be something lurking in the shadows waiting for Afa Ninja. And uh, just not the case. There are no aggressive wards from the Dire. They don't have anything beyond the river. And I think that's the big difference maker. They expected there'd be like a, a ward here. Um, and then obviously seeing the Shadow Fiend farming, the natural pattern would be to gank him as soon as these Ancients are cleared. But that smoke bait actually just wastes the smoke. And now they might not be able to engage in the pit. Right now we do have all the smokes on cooldown. That was their last smoke, and all they did was try to bait the Shadow Fiend with it, assuming that there was a ward in play around here. Now there's going to be some wards, but not ones they can take care of readily. And of course the Roshan, the ever-important Roshan, going to be going in favor of 4CNL. Uh, usually that's the last thing you'll see when you have a Slaughter, a Juggernaut, and a Shadow Fiend all on one team. But in this case, it works out for them. They, it really comes down to the rocket spam from Clockwork. Very diligent making sure they keep that intel, keep knowing exactly what's going on in the pit, and it dissuades HR from pushing that objective. Now Gyrocopter here with the MKB. Is there a Solar Crest on its way? That's an interesting choice. It does give a good amount of attack damage, and that's probably the most important thing here, but yeah, I guess it's just a preventative aspect. So I would say that Gyrocopter can't even consider Daedalus over MKB anymore since Solar Crest is just in the game. Even if it's not purchased, it's just a threat that you don't want to have to deal with because Solar Crest just hurts Gyrocopter so much in terms of damage output. So, going for the MKB, BKB. And uh, looking pretty good. I feel like now it all comes down to whether HR can get their combos off on him. Finger of Death level 2, Lion really needs to make this spell happen, but he's not going to get the TP away. The charge gives vision and Mambo pounces with that hook shot. So. And then Nico can just keep doing that. Essentially, as long as he's far away on the map, he can just start a charge and keep tabs on that person, and that'll set up the Disruptor Glimpse, or in this case, the Clockwork Hook Shot. It's just all too easy for them to find those picks. But I'm curious what they do next. They've got Aegis the Immortal looking at the top tier 2, all ultimates at the ready. But are they afraid of the Wyvern? The Wyvern has some really good potential to disrupt uh, a team fight here in the top lane. And the fact that they don't know where he's at right now, it could be quite problematic. But that being said, right now it doesn't seem like Hellraisers are in the mood to fight. They're instead going to split push with Afeninjay's Shadow Fiend. And that's going to be a tier 2 going down very quickly against HR. 
is under attack. Oh, charge. Not going to be succeeding. The TP came out just in time for the Winter Wyvern, and he will slip away. We're going to see some TPs back. Lift will be popped to keep Koykova here longer, and Bambo actually cancels the TP. Oh, maybe TP too far forward and was afraid of just getting crushed and killed, which is pro the probable occurrence. Oh, Glyph's back. They do catch Yajitsu. Committing two ultimates here to get him, but he will go down. Lion falls. Charged here towards the bottom lane. And it's going to be Afan NJ prepping that Requiem, but it will not be on the same time. Bambo's TP cancel actually increases Koikova's timer, and the Bastard on Shotslow means he can't get the stun. Koikova kills off Afan NJ in his BKB, and now is looking for even one more. Glimpse back onto Shotslow, keeping damage on him so he can't blink away, and he is going to be charged in the end, going down for a double kill. Start pursuing onto the Juggernaut. Not the easiest kill, but still trying to get even more out of that exchange. Incredible movement there from 4CNL, and a little bit of luck, too. The TP cancel from Bambo. He was either too far forward or something else uh, made him change his mind about his TP. He cancels its TP on bottom lane, and then when the Gyrocopter TP is right here, the Requiem is too early because of the increased channel time. That actually completely changes the situation where Gyrocopter would be literally one shot. Instead, he's perfectly fine to, to go ahead and just maul that uh, Shadow Fiend. And of course, uh, a really lucky charge through on the Slardar disrupts his stun as well. HR just really at a loss for these team fights. And Bambo. He may have missed a few hooks, but he's building up that Aghanim Scepter, and then he'll just have uh, all the hooks to throw out. Hit or miss, doesn't matter. Could be a good crush initiation before the BKB comes out on Koikova, but you have to have, like, everybody ready to roll, and we see, like, two heroes up top. Like, the heroes back here are close enough to really get involved, because you still have the blink on the line. But if the, the Winter Wyvern's up top, then you really can't do anything. And it becomes very scary from here. Wyvern... If he gets scouted at all, he's just going to get hooked, he's going to get charged, anything to catch him off. But for now, Force Dino just pushed down the tier 2, and Lion actually gets a quick hit to deny the tower, and kind of wastes their time. Looking for that Aegis timing, but we're going to look at Bambo instead, who gets crushed. Not the target you really want to go on, but they, what? They commit all these ultimates onto him, and now Juggernaut just tries to right-click down quick, but it will be enough to pop his Aegis. But now we see the Sonic Wave coming through, and we could see some good damage coming out from Quakeva with that BKB gone. It's mostly AoE damage though, not single target, and they're just focusing him down. So, in the end, he will fall, and it just comes down to the quick kills at the start. Nikwa finished off on the tail end, and Pycat, of course, long gone at this point. But a big aspect of that fight is not necessarily killing off the clockwork, because yeah, cogs can mess things up. I feel like they overcommitted on the clockwork, but the most important thing is they killed EGM in the initial volley as well. And the fact is, he just couldn't contribute enough. The gyrocopter was not safe to, to spam out his spells, and HR, they are able to get a really good team fight on their hands. And for CNL least expected it. Affidinja, another double damage rune. Man, this guy is just finding that, that blue lightning up in the river constantly. But I don't think they can go high ground with it. It's just one of those uh, nice benefits to quicker pushes and, and flash farming. Bambo should be caught here. Yep, double stun stacked on top against the blade mail. It's not ideal, but it should be enough. Bambo will be going down, but they do get the Pie Cat jump, and Afaninja is dropping very low very quickly. Not low enough to bring him down, though, as the Gyrocopter, the main source of the team fight damage, is not there. So Pie Cat pops the BKB, gets very little out of it, and uh, they do get the glimpse back. Just no! It's a BKB just in the nick of time. And Shoshlo is going to help him out. Pycat is going to be covered up by that Static Storm a little bit. Barely slips through. And the charge forward on the Shoshlo might be his death. The crush is not timed as perfectly as it needed to be. And uh, still, it looks like he'll be able to get out here. Um, the blink is going to be put on cooldown from the Earner Shadows, but he'll still get the blink in time before the homing missile connects. So yeah, a lot, of, a lot of stuff happening there. Um, overall, favoring Hellraisers, I would say. I mean, they do lose the Shadow Fiend in the end there, which is quite unfortunate. I think that really comes down to the Cold Embrace. Um, if he just BKBs and keeps walking, he could probably get out of there. But because he got Cold Embrace, stunned by the Wyvern, his ally, he actually gets uh, locked in position for four seconds there. And 
that is uh, not going to be where you need to be. So they clean him up. Juggernaut now the top net worth and Shadow Fiend down here in fourth due to a couple of deaths in the back-to-back -back fights. He'll tank up though with an eye of Scotty and, and should be able to withstand the, the pressure of 4 CNL once, once again in the near future. Radio Knobs scouting out stack action here from Quagva. This Dire Observer, I don't think it blocks. I feel like the line is like literally right here. But most importantly, it was just a quick ward for EGM to get that glimpse back. And I mean, you, that's a rare glimpse to be able to get it at just the threshold. So a really good uh, usage there from EGM. EGM has a four staff, happy to buy up a Gemma True site, but who do they put it on? Bambo's been dying a lot, to be frank. He has actually died six times this game, the highest of anybody on the map. So that's just how Bambo plays, but all the same, I'm really curious who they actually give the Gemma True site to to get the most value out of it. Radiant we'll get a free lane ward, it looks like, attack. here in the mid. But there's a lot of pinging going on as uh, Queen of Pain slips away from the tree line. They're looking for him still. They think he's somewhere around here, but in fact, Piecat is long gone, having not only blinked, but TP'd back to the other side of the map. Key item pickups coming out now. We've got the Solar Press on the Wyvern, but we've already got an MKB to answer that from the Gyrocopter. We've got the Force Staff on Slarda, the Manta Style on Juggernaut, as well as his BKB. But the most important item here is the Satanic for Koikova. The fact is, even with only six seconds left on his BKB charges, He's still able to do so much damage and therefore lifesteal a lot in this case here with the Satanic. So he's just a full-on tank build. As long as he stays alive a little bit in these fights and just doesn't get killed off 100-0, he should be able to really obliterate. There are two factors that could make the Satanic less valuable. That's the A, the Cold Embrace, which obviously you're not lifestealing when you're not doing damage. And then the illusions of the Juggernaut. Rare, but maybe he accidentally hits the illusion instead of the real thing, and you don't get lifesteal off of that either. Gonna see a smoke play, very aggressive movement here, but can they scout it out? They actually break the smoke. Koikova is gonna be Winter's Curse? No, he gets the BKB! The Static Storm to cover him up, and he's just doing so much damage before he finally gets blown up here. The Omni Slash doing massive work. It's Live O, really cleaning house here, and the Sexy Bambo Ghost after doesn't seem to be enough to get him out of here. Pycat will clean up some kills on the back line. The Slardar and the Lion both go down, but they lost so much on the onset of that fight with a very nice Omni Slash. And of course the Winner's Curse. A little bit of slow reaction time on Gotham, but he got it. Pycat's in a bit of a rough spot here. He just lost the amp damage. Um, still trying to trade around a little bit, but um, yeah, I guess if Gotham could had the Arcy burn, he could pursue him over the tree line, but with it being on cooldown, Pygat's technically safe. Alrighty. So. Spirit Breaker still looking for that BKB. We'll have it pretty soon. Roshan back up. Another key objective for both sides. I was surprised that 4 CNL were able to claim Roche number one. I would presume that HR still have that advantage in Roche number two. They just need to get those ultis back up. And really impressive damage output from its live O in that last fight. I think he got a few lucky crits, but overall Blight Dance is just such a reliable passive. Like, you're always going to be able to get uh, a number of crits in the fight. And in this case, he just got a few strung back-to-back. -back. Smoke play. What they want to do here for CNL, they want to go into the Radiant Jungle. They want to find a kill, and if they get a, a, key, a kill on a core hero, they get Roshan. Or even Wyvern probably secures Roshan. So they're not going to look to go right into the pit. I think that would be very foolish. What they can do instead is go just right into enemy territory and try to uh, just get a kill. Though they're, they're going to go in the pit. And this is going to be something that, with the illusion just now leaving, it might they might miss out on it entirely. What Yajitsu is trying to do is break the smoke that might be coming this way. He's got an observer ward here, so he breaks the smoke and immediately blinks back. But that just allows Force and L to just walk into the pit. And while it's taken a while, it seems like they might have this one. If they get caught, though, it could be huge. Got him. Looking to fly over. There's the jump in from the Juggernaut. And got him. Gets the Winner's Curse. On to three here. Massive damage coming out. And the Omni Slash as well. But Gyrocopter does pick up the Aegis of the Immortal. We're actually going to see a Finger of Death. Massive damage. Destroying for CNL. They're four down, but one's coming back. Koikova has that Satanic. And uh, doesn't barely get the chance to use it before he gets crit down as well. Mega kill streak. 
as HR move in, and that's why I thought it wouldn't be the best idea. You want to kill a single hero before you go for Roshan there. Uh, you don't kill it fast enough to just be sneaky about it. They have no negative armor on their team, and they just only have one really hard right clicker who didn't go for that hard of a right click build. The satanic BKB being tank items. MKB is great, but it's not enough to kill Roshan in the time that HR will not get suspicious. So 4 CNL getting very ambitious with that Roshan, and they're paying for it with it looks like a full lane of mid racks. Bambo going in, getting the cog back. But I think that force, uh, HR is still going to press this, even without an Aegis to back them up. Bottom tier 2 fallen. Mid melee is what they want to look for, and then they'll back off. But they're focusing both, and they're splitting their damage. It could be bad. Right now, Bambo will be a little bit too far forward in, but good force that from EGM bails them out at the last second. So they will clean up the range racks. Melee coming up, and without the gyrocopter, it looks like that's gone too. So, in the end, HR take a huge swing forward. Really, really smooth movement from the Wyvern in particular, and the Juggernaut really surprising them with that Blink Dagger pickup. I, I didn't really get a chance to talk about it, but this Juggernaut doesn't suddenly get from here to here, Blink, uh, BKB'd in the pit without uh, a special something, and that Blink Dagger actually was the perfect way to invade that pit there. They forced the BKBs early so that the crush can come later, and yeah, it just was perfect from, from the Juggernaut. It's Livo has been playing an amazing game, and let's we'll look. 22k net worth. This guy is 9, 3, and 7. And he's got 5k gold. Butterfly? MKB is against you, so maybe you just go for a Scotty or a Satanic instead. Or, Scotty, sorry. Scotty or, uh, Abyssal Blade. I, I really like Moonshard as well. I would say Juggernaut's one of the few heroes that I would say you should look to put Moonshard on the hero before you consume it. Whereas, usually it's just used as a buff. I actually think it's a good item to have in his inventory. We'll check out Bambo though. Looks like he's going to be going down. Just quick, easy set of kills. Nothing to be done about that. And uh, they're going to try to take that to the bank. They're going to try to put, get this creep wave into the dire base and turn that into a uh, bottom lane of Rex. Quick for though, pushing things out. Has his TP uh, perfectly fine. And now they seem to be split in their decision making. They obviously want to go for the tier 3 and the racks, but they're looking to cancel the TP of Koikova, and he's going to go in the trees. So you have to go fast, you have to blink on top of him. It's the winner's curse! That's going to be the bottom lane of racks as Koikova can do nothing to defend his base. Clockwork buys back, but EGM's already down for the count. Jarcopter doesn't even kill the Wyvern before they, he just has to run, run, run all the way home, and Bambo caught in a real sticky wicket. It might be the dieback, but in fact, it's just going to be him running for his life, and Quickfoot now isolated. It's like, yeah, you can run home, but you're all by yourself now. Popping the BKB, he's got to be one man against the world, and he does get the Satanic off. He's going to be able to kill off Afeninjay, but will be fingered in turn. Oh, uh, yeah, Jitsu looks to be going down as Pycap follows through on him. We'll watch Nikwa instead. No, he gets to TP away. Lion's fine, and got him. Actually going to be cold embracing himself, which merely delays the inevitable. No blink away. Urn sticking to him, and that is going to be uh, our nice little Arctic Rim play, but the Clockwork should track him down. Do it with flare. There we go. So it took a, <laughs> taking a really long time, and I guess that this is uh, this little wild goose chase is important because it does take about 10, 15 seconds off the death timers of Juggernaut and Shadowfiend. There's not really an objective that 4 CNL can take in that time frame. That being said, the gem does trade hands back over to 4 CNL. The, the rightful owners of the item. And uh, Gyrocopter gets some time to respawn as well. And the Wyvern really out-executing 4CNO there, but luckily for the Four Clovers, they actually did not lose racks as a result of that. That uh, Gyrocopter build proves its worth, though. I don't think the Gyrocopter lives in that situation with any other items, but the BKB Satanic is exactly what he needed to... Uh, to actually go in essentially 1v4 until his team was ready to back him up. Regeneration. Still goes down, but they get a lot of kills in exchange with it. And Pycap, now with a Lotus Orb, Slaughter with a Vlads. I think I prefer Crimson Guard over Vlads here, but of course the lifesteal component can't be ignored. Like, uh, plus 5 armor is not the only reason you go for Vlads. The, the lifesteal and the, a little bit of bonus damage could be really good for the Shadow Fiend and for the Juggernaut. Though I believe it's still, uh has the a vulnerability aura factor 
I don't know. They, they even in uh, Source One with the spring cleaning patch, they fixed a, a lot of the Juggernaut interaction with Aura and Omni Slash. But I believe the Vlad's Aura still goes away after 0.5 seconds of Omni Slashing, which is only a, a fraction of the duration. But even still, so we've got a five-second BKB on the Juggernaut. He's got his Basher, his BOTs. Probably goes for the Abyssal and then the Moon Shard, but would eat it in this case. Meanwhile, Shadowfin going to be going for the Assault Cross, and I think that's their, their endgame items. They don't really want the game to go much longer than that, or, or it gets a little bit dicey. For CNL, kind of just keeping to their territory right now. We'll see what they can accomplish here as they mostly focus on the defense. Right now, you can you can understand why. I mean, they're, they got a lot of pressure on them. One stun could be a kill, and one kill could mean the game. So they, they really just need to make sure that all their movements are careful and precise. Full 10 second BKB on the Spear Breaker, as well as a Ghost Scepter. Seems like Nico should be able to withstand uh, the initial barrage of a lot of this damage, and should be able to make a key contribution to the team fight. Tension rising, but it looks like this game might go a little bit longer here, guys. 44 minutes. Next Roshan spawning very soon. This could be the Roche that wins the game with the cheese, but it really could go either way. Right now, 4 CNL are only down one lane of racks. They are more vulnerable in the sense that they don't have the tier 3 bottom. But as a whole, I still think they have the potential to take the fights. Hellraisers are up 11.5k, nearly 5,000 in terms of experience, but... Force Sinal has shown what they can do with this gyrocopter. He can still do a lot of damage, and one good item pickup, even a divine, is a consideration here. And they could absolutely just batter down HR. Yeah. Another thing about the Vlad's versus Crimson Guard thing is not only is Vlad's cheaper. Oh gosh, he gets got out by the creep. But, uh, oh, that actually might cost them a little bit here. They're going to be charging right on top of him, hookshotting as well. Easy pickings! An all to one dire scout. The range creep. Finding him out in the shadows. Dyer's top tower has fallen. But in the meantime, Juggernaut does take the top tier two. But yeah, Vlad's not only cheaper, but also probably scales better as the game progresses. As when when you approach Divine Rapier territory for Quikva, it doesn't matter if you shave off fifty five damage with block. Got him, getting caught out. They do have the Thunder Strike vision, but do they have the charge? Do, don't need it. Spearbreaker is actually charging onto the Jitsu, who gets the stun off before he gets caught with the Nether Strike there. So, in the end, uh, a couple of good picks. Forcing all not really in a better position to, to like, take to any towers. They can't get all the way to the tier 3 before that those kills matter. But maybe they could look at getting better control over the Rush Pit. There is still that Geometry Sight on... Nikwa, as well as one on Pycat now. That was actually picked up from uh, the Wyvern there when they killed her, him off. Where's my pension? Coming in. Gonna see the butterfly come out soon for the gyrocopter. This is something that isn't gonna be countered too easily by HR. They're gonna have to invest heavily to, to manage to mitigate that. If Gyrocopter gets his BKB off in the fight at all, he should just live, period. I mean, I know Winter's Curse will take out uh, three and a half seconds of that five, but that's still like time where he's not taking magical effects, he's not getting chain stunned easily, and he has that Satanic and Butterfly. Like, there's so much value in the Gyrocopter at this stage in the game. And I would actually consider Rapier as a possibility for his next one, even in a, a game that's not this far behind. Gets the Aegis Immortal, this will give him time to farm up that butterfly. And then he's going to have, I would say, an advantage over the enemy cores. But of course, if you add the Abyssal onto the Winter's Curse, you get a different uh, story, right? Because you get, if you focus down your key disables here, Winter's Curse and Abyssal Blade, that takes away his BKB timer. That means you get your Crush, your Hex, your Earth Spike, all this good stuff to really knock this Gyrocopter out. So, end of the day, he's still... 
never going to be fully confident in his ability to stay alive, and that's a, that's a problem. And it really comes down to the draft of Hellraisers. They have a really good disabled lineup, if nothing else. They've been able to accomplish a lot in terms of damage from the Shadow Fiend and the Juggernaut, and HR's other heroes have just been all about control. So in terms of Smokes of Deceit right now, we've got no Smokes currently in the Radiant Shop, not in the Courier, so they don't have that option. For CNO, they don't have any in the shop, but I believe they have one on the Courier, yes. So we're going to see maybe that come out pretty soon. The Butterfly is the, the timing you want it, but Quickman needs to get some mana up first. Nikwa, a little bit far forward, but you always have at least a Clockwork in range with that. Hookshot, and in fact, we're going to see that Hookshot come out on Gotham. He'll try to Arctic Burn away, going to get Cog knocked, and uh, they'll just keep Vision with the charge. Should be able to bring him down. Oh, the Juggernaut doesn't get his Omni off immediately, and it's all going on to Quikva, who's just doing too much. He's actually dodging, he's surviving, he's got the Aegis and the Satanic, and he doesn't actually get to get any auto attacks off inside Bambo's Cogs. Those Cogs were a huge misplay, but it's only costing them the Aegis. It disengaged from HR as they get the Shadow Fiend out, but what about the Juggernaut? Spin, TP, Nether Strike, catching him out. They will kill off the Lion as the Clockwork chases him down, and Nequa will set up the kill for Juggernaut. That is going to be a four for the Aegis, and that is actually huge. Really good just pursuit overall from 4CNL. Breaking out of the base, taking full advantage of that Aegis the Immortal. And uh, it's just really hard to focus the Gyrocopter in those situations. Now he's got Cheese instead. Like, it just feels like every fight, Quick of Us the focal point. And it's so natural for him to survive through these situations, especially with no Abyssal. I think MKB is just such a, a critical component here. And I don't think they're going to be able to farm it up before perhaps we see the game's end. We just saw the Aegis pop for four heroes. Gyrocopter with an, a Cheese is just about as strong. So I'm really not sure if Hellraisers can manage it, especially since now they're trying to hold their high ground with multiple dead and the Winter's Curse on CD. Luckily, this creepway is pretty far off. And can you use Empowering Haste to bring it forward? That'd be sweet. I guess you have to do that like the last six seconds, right? Yeah. But anyways, they, they want to bring the creep forward. They want to force the Juggernaut buyback. And uh, right now, the Sharkopter is really big. Like, they put everything they could into him, and it just didn't matter. Curious have got amplified though. The Sardar was really focused on other things at the time, so there's a chance he might not have. So we do have a pause coming through. I'm not sure exactly what this one is. Uh, just a disconnect from Gotham, but for for reasons unknown. Very critical point in the game. Gotta say, the stand-in has been playing marvelously, though. It's live O has really done a lot on the Juggernaut. Um, the item build, I think some would debate, but his overall performance and movement in the fights has been really solid. Um, so liking to see what he brings in. Apparently, he's just a really uh, high-level CIS stand-in. Like, he stood in for Na'Vi a few times, and uh, he's played alongside Havos, who was the former carry player in the for HR. Or, he was kind of unofficial. He was trying out, and it seems like the tryouts didn't go so well. At least, uh, Havos didn't see, see it that way. Gonna see some attempted high ground defense, but the creep wave is here. And, yeah, they are getting some good hits in here onto the tier 3 tower. Finally looking to break the base, but I'm really looking at Bambo. He's looking for that hookshot line. Oh, no, he's in the creep wave! Why would Bambo be here instead of, like, looking for an opportunity here? I'm not sure, but... Um... He's back, he's ready to rumble, but it looks like they think too much time has passed. The Winter's Curse is back, the Juggernaut's so close to respawning, they don't want to get caught out. So they just reset. This cheese is not going to be expiring anytime soon. In fact, it uh, gets better with age. As that, that's what they tell me anyways. So, looking good right now for Koikova. And we're just going to need more, more disables. Like, just keep throwing things at him. Um, the problem is, if you throw, like, a Hex, if you pick up a Hex on uh, one of the 
members of Hellraisers, then you're just going to get a Lotus Star off. Queen of Pain picked up that Lotus Star for the exact reason, just so she can throw it on Gyrocopter. When he's in a tough spot, it'll dispel him, purge him, and, of course, start reflecting any single target things back the other way. So, good Lotus Orb use that last fight, which uh, probably dispelled the amp damage, now that I think about it. I know I didn't see the amp damage on Gyrocopter, and I think that's why. It's because the Lotus Orb took it off. That being said, I mean, just dispelling a basic Hex is going to be just a huge aspect of how the fights play out. So, Pycat really just playing behind his buddy really effectively, and um, perhaps considering the buyout for this Sheepstick. He's got 1580 reliable gold, so you really don't want to spend it that way. But it really just comes down to how much pressure. I think he'll buy it if he has to. The the secret the courier is already there, and he's just about to have enough gold for it. But it actually, I'd actually like to. I know, I know I know as soon as we unpause that he's gonna buy it. But I would actually really like to see him not do that. Right now, his reliable gold is 1580. His buyback cost is 1650. So if he just gets one more assist in a team fight he will have buyback in purely reliable gold. So if we can just farm up 1,500 gold from creeps, he can have hex and buyback, and that would be just amazing. But, I'm, I, like I said, I'm almost positive he'll just buy it from the secret shop as soon as the unpause goes through. It's only one gold away. Yes, as a matter of fact, he did DC. Winter Wyvern, incapacitated. I'm sure the admin is tracking the pause minutes here. Is there anything else to really talk about? The Aghanim Scepter coming out for Lion pretty soon. It does mean that Lion is an actual threat in in his own special way. He actually is a hero that you want to start looking to focus down uh, before the fight gets uh, dragged out too long. Because 40 second uh, cooldown dropped to 20 second cooldown with the Axe. That is a very spammable ultimate with the Aghanim Scepter. That Finger of Death not only being an AoE, which could very well hit like two heroes, more importantly, it's, a, it's an ability that cools down quickly and you just get another one off right when you need it. So I think Lion actually has to be a kill target. Luckily, Jarkopter is still hitting really hard and Yujitsu doesn't have a Ghost Scepter. So there's a good chance a collateral damage will take about half his HP away and then either the Clockwork or the Spear Breaker could finish the job. Pycat has a question. Not sure what it is. And... Not sure what else to really cover here. 10 second BKB still up on the Spear Breaker. He's not really had a chance to use it too much. Had a need to use it too much. He's he's generally coming in in the tail end of the fights and cleaning up. Also not sure if Shotsu's, uh mid to late game on the Slaughter has been all that impressive. Like If you look at his net worth here, he's barely above his support, the Lion. He's actually below the 4 position before CNL. And he just really hasn't gotten that much. I mean, two kills, ten assists. He got the Blink Dagger at a pretty good timing, but since then, four staff and Vlad's is all that he's offered. No BKB for himself, uh, which might cause him issues as the Disruptor approaches that Axe. And, yeah, it's just really him walking around four staffing people and dropping out damage. He's really not able to st stick inside the fight. He just dies too quickly. Yeah, and people will talk about like the Basher as like a bad item pickup. I think it's okay. Um, being able to disable the Gyrocopter during Magic Immunity is pretty huge. The problem is, that, and that was a good idea until the Butterfly came out. And then suddenly the Butterfly makes Juggernaut's damage really weak, unless he has an MKB. So I think he's regretting that, but he's farming up pretty quickly, and he has a good chance to, to make up for that with a new item pickup. We do see... Pycat has picked up his Scythe of Vice. No buyback for him. Let's just look at buybacks in general, team to team. We have three on the Radiant, two on the Dire. Uh, most importantly, the Juggernaut, the Shadow Fiend, and the Gyrocopter. Smoke comes off cooldown. They immediately go for it. And the Star Ward, don't, I don't believe it smoked it. Uh, they scouted it out. They see them not at the Ancients, though. They didn't saw them not go back to the mid lane. So they have to be suspicious. But Quakeva, actually, no, he's completely isolated. And that's going to be his buyback right here. That's huge. What a pickoff. Just going right to him, bringing him down all alone over by the Ancients. He just felt so confident, so comfortable with the wards that were in play, but they literally just got that smoke off cooldown and they immediately turn it into a carry kill. Now the Abyssal Blade is finished for the Juggernaut, giving them that reliable BKB piercing disable, but in the meantime, Pycat 
Oh, that's so dirty, actually. That's insanely dirty. Now the, all they can do is rotate lanes. That is actually insanely smart from PyCat. Just going in the tree line, Sonic Wave takes out almost all the HP from the creeps, and Bambo finishes it off with the Rocket Flare, meaning they can't get that creep wave into the base while Gyrocopter's down. They bought themselves about eight seconds there just with those creeps dying. But now these creeps will make it to the mid lane. We'll see what HR want to do now that backdoor protection is going to be down. Looks like they just want to go pronto here onto the bottom racks. They are not afraid of anything with uh, the gyrocopter down. I mean, this guy is just such a massive part of their net worth as well as their late game lineup. Slardar backing, though, means they're not going to commit to it. And the gyrocopter pickoff in the end means nothing. He doesn't have to buy back. He loses out on some farm, but he's already got a lot of gold, uh, sufficient gold, I would say, to even close out the game. So with that in mind, that smoke, their final smoke, got used just to own the map for about a minute. They didn't get to take any real objective off of it. And now things get dangerous. One pick off for HR actually means their death, and they're just up against so many buybacks now. Gyrocopter is 300 gold away from his own. And then everybody but Queen of Pain will have it at that point. Winter Wyvern actually going to get caught out here. Not sure if that's... I, I really... Other than like trying to get an idea of what's going on around Roche, there's really no reason for the Wyvern to be there. The Wyvern places this Observer Ward, which may or may not be dewarded shortly, and they kind of just go from there. Oh, this is a close one, guys. I actually, it's, I would say it's too close to call. Right now I favor 4CNL, but Zorganaut just picked up an MKB. He very well could just obliterate that Gyrocopter in one quick sw uh, swoop. Two heroes don't have buyback. Yeah, Jitsu, who got his Aghanim Scepter, and PyCat, who got his Hex. If either one of those items decide to fight, then obviously even more valuable than a life, or a second life at that. But it really comes down to who gets picked off. What One ultimate hitting a, a certain target. It's not going to be on Shotsla, though, as he is able to dodge away. Bambo off the mark. Charging forward, though. This could be a big pick on Afro Ninja. They blink Hex, initiate. There is no BKB coming out. There is going to be an Omni Slash on Aniqua. And now Afro Ninja will drop the Requiem. There's a great Abyssal Blade on the Quickville. He's looking for the Satanic. He can't get the cheese. He can't get the cheese. He can't get the Satanic. They lose two heroes, and that might be it. They're going to force two buybacks here with their next push play. Bambo trying to Houdini his way through, but either way, that's two buybacks. Actually going to be a third kill here as they just happen upon PyCat. Was he going for another uh, Sonic Wave play or was he just goofing around? I don't know. He, he gets caught out and that's going to be huge. He's the one that doesn't have buyback because he bought the Hex like I was talking about. So now they're going to push in. This creep wave is going to break backdoor protection, and bottom lane should be going down. Like, even if you buy back on two, and they bought back on one already, holding without a Queen of Pain is really difficult, but they're doing it. This is their plan. EGM with the... He sold his boots for Agadems. He's looking for the biggest static storm of his life right now, but we're going to see the Blink Crush times two. He needs it. He only gets it onto these two heroes, but it's enough for Koikova to find two early kills. The Cold Embrace on Juggernaut means he'll stay alive for a while. Will it be enough? Oh, he pops a BKB and then goes down instantly. Now F and NJ's on the run. Got him. Pretty much dead to rights. And the glimpse back on the Shadow Fiend. They get the turnaround and they will get their kills. Triple kill for Koikova. They hold the line without losing bottom lane. And that's just immense. You already see BOT's bot on the SF. He's like, we gotta look for a play. We gotta buy back. We gotta jump. We gotta do something. But right now, with the buyback on the Clockwork, the Gyrocopter, and the Spirit Breaker, they're able to accomplish so much there. I believe the Bambo buyback was a combat one. He had, he started the fight, died, and then came back. In the meantime, Koikova, he's looking for his Aegis. And then probably looking at a Rapier, uh, I gotta say. In the meantime, Disruptor picks up the 56 minute boots of speed, really solid. You'll see how quickly he got gold out of that. The comeback gold up against like these super farm carries at the 1065. So what that means is that Disruptor sold all his items before Staff and Axe, and then after the fight, gets to pick up boots, goes to TP. So your bread and butter there. Aegis for Koikva, Cheese for Bambo, and a hell of a late game scenario between these two teams. 
Game three of the best of three series about to be decided, and oh man, it still is all about those picks. It's all about who gets those ulti initiations. Right now, we do see 12,000 net worth favoring HR. That swing mostly comes down to buyback usage, having three buybacks used just now. Also, of course, the triple kill from Koikova was a 60% reduction thanks to the buyback. Whereas EGM got full gold for the Juggernaut killed. Experience is pretty even, but if you look at the levels, you'll see why. Two level 25 heroes, a lot of level 18s. Pretty much just everybody neck and neck here. Really tough position for either side to fight from, but right now I think that it's all about the Aegis, and it's really, they, they HR want to try to wait out the Aegis and f extend the play as much as possible. Find a pickoff in order to do that, or just keep split pushing lanes, but fortunately no, they have so many tools to engage, and they're going to start off with the Spirit Breaker here. Breaking in the tree line, got him, I don't think he's going to scout this out. Actually going to be uh, Illusion Bait, which will force out the hook shot. That's only 12 second cooldown. Quakeva already Lotus. Very early Lotus coming out for Pycat. They're going to get the glimpse back. BKB forced. And FNNJ now will not have a BKB for the fight. Quakeva is caught by the amp damage. There's going to be a hook shot. Jumping onto the Juggernaut. He's disabled by the Sheep Stick. And he is making a lot of damage. He will be nuked down without Omni Slashing. Shot Slow's Crush means nothing. He will go down as well. And they're going to be expending some buybacks for sure. Afo will get the TP. Got him. Looks to do so as well. Everybody alive TP's out, but in the meantime, you've got two buybacks that are about to be forced. Koikova is going to march to the high ground and just try to disengage as soon as the buybacks are forced. HR know this, but can they actually keep them in this uh, general area long enough for Juggernaut and Sardar to kill off the Gyrocopter? If Gyrocopter gets caught, they, they could win the game off of it, but they have to do it now. The double buyback comes through, they initiate, killing off the clockwork immediately. Great jump from Yajitsu, and there's Koikova dying once. Can we get it twice? It looks like it. No TP, no BKB, abyssal and destroyed. That dieback is 110 seconds, and that could be the game breaker here. Queen of Pain, Pycat, now he has to go for the dirty play. He has to just destroy the creep wave, uh, but he's already used the sonic wave most recently. And, uh, <laughs> that's hilarious, actually. A glimpse just to try to get him as far away from the base as possible. But no, they're going for the throne. There is a buyback on the Queen of Pain. She will probably suicide to try to hold the line. But in the end, they really can't do anything for 80 seconds. The Gyrocopter is their team fight. It is their damage. And right now, they just don't have enough. EGM, the Ghost Scepter is nice, but the Finger of Death is nicer. And that might just be it. The High Cat split pushing can't do anything and this is going to be the last stand. Pycat jumping back, the glyph coming through, but there's no way they hold for a minute. The GG comes through. An amazing game of Dota 2 here from both Hellraisers and the Four Clovers and the Leprechaun, but that last hurrah was just too strong for HR. And it turned out to be one of the most action-packed, intense games of uh, this month at least. Obviously we got the Frankfurt Major coming up, but this one prefaces it pretty nicely in terms of uh, really just intense Dota 2. So uh, looking just over at uh, a post-game scenario, I, obviously the last play is what a lot of people examine, just looking at what happened there. You have two buybacks that are going to be available and going to be used. The, the last item picked up from the Juggernaut was a Monkey King bar. That was picked up a lot longer before, so he would have farmed buyback for sure. They knew that he had buyback. They probably assumed Slaughter did since, uh, yeah, no, he still had just a Vlad's Force and Blink. So those two heroes hadn't bought anything a long time. They certainly had buyback, but HR were patient about it. They were waiting for them to be within their grasp, and Lion gets the jump. As soon as Lion gets the jump, they get a fight, and Gyrocopter dies twice. Gyrocopter dying twice, without a rapier, without any hope of fighting back. That's the game. And that really is all it comes down to, is just getting their initiation to connect and forcing a bit over overextension. They had to TP back EGM at the end there, uh, disruptor on like 5 HP. So you, you want to force the buybacks, but in doing so, you put yourself in that situation that can be game losing. So while it was very intense, while it was very close, while I feel like it could have been everybody's game until that moment, Hellraisers take it. 2-1 to one over 4CNL here in the Star Ladder I-League European Division.
Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the commentary. I, myself, am Blaze. If you enjoyed it, look me up on Twitter, at BlazeCasting. And uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, happy to be able to broadcast the game for you guys on behalf of BTS. We'll see you guys next time for some more action. We've got Summit 4 right now over on the BTS2 stream, I believe. And then later tonight, I'm going to be broadcasting one of the North American matches uh, for the evening. So that's going to be in about five and a half hours' time. Tune in on Dota Star Ladder EN. Good night.